Hi, this is Ashish R. Bidekar and welcome to my podcast, The ARB Show. I'm thrilled to introduce today's guest, Anshuman, who is also my college buddy from MBA days at SEMSER. Anshuman has over 25 years of experience in transformation, innovation, quality and simplification. He is a passionate and result-oriented leader who strives to deliver world-class operation excellence to clients across multiple industries. He is currently Director, Head of Operational Excellence at DXC Technology. He is also an ASQ Fellow, a LinkedIn Top Voice and a mid-career coach who loves to share his knowledge and expertise with others. He has taught over uh, and shared his tools and principles with over uh, 10,000 professionals and over 1,000 students and have helped his clients win several quality awards during the demi times. Welcome to the show, Anshuman. Do share your life journey and how you started posting on LinkedIn. Hey, thanks, Ashish. Fantastic to speak to you. Of course, uh, you know, we do speak as friends quite often, but pleased to be on your show and congratulations. You've, I think, completed 12 or 13 shows. Uh, uh, the first few are always the difficult ones, so I'm glad you've lasted the journey. Now onwards, it is only onwards and upwards. So firstly, congratulations. Uh, my life journey is not much, uh, not very romantic or uh, anything to talk about. Like everybody else, like you, like many of our other college friends, um, we, I keep saying that it is more brick by brick and then compounding. So my initial years were, of course, in quality management, which was my interest area. And then from there, I started picking uh, roles where I could expand this scope a little bit. And uh, from initial few years at Kimpro, then moved on to other roles in other organizations over the years. And eventually, you know, one thing started leading to another. But one common thing has been that I've always remained in the space of quality, operational excellence and, and the likes. So that's pretty much uh, the quality journey and um, happy to share if during the show you have more questions. But um, coming to the LinkedIn question, I think uh, again, it is not an overly romantic answer because like most things in life, it has been very organic. Uh, it started with being a LinkedIn member in I think 2006, I remember, where LinkedIn itself was very nascent. For many years, like everybody else, I was just using it to connect with old friends and colleagues whom I had moved on because of various jobs and roles or cities. Uh, and to be fair, LinkedIn was only for that. You know, it, it had not discovered the LinkedIn that we know today is only in the last four or five years. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And then over the years, I think around 2015, 16, I started posting a little bit more regularly. Uh, around 2017, 18 became, I started experimenting because LinkedIn started video option and other options also. So I started experimenting a little bit. I already had a quality related group. So I, I was fairly active, I must say. And um, uh, you might be surprised to know that I got my big break. Um, I won't say big, but I certainly got two jobs or three jobs through LinkedIn. So I'm one of the few people um, who got a job on LinkedIn or through LinkedIn in 2010. So that way it has been good for me. And um, more recently in the last three, four years, I started posting quite regularly, started finding an area where I wanted to post about and became a little bit more active. And um, that has led to one thing leading to another, you know, you get more uh, love and affection from your audience and yeah here I am on your show great great thanks thanks Anshuman and uh, only one small difference which I would like to share with the audience that in the college days Anshuman used to sport a handlebar moustache right <laughs> so one would have expected him to uh, you know be consistent in that appearance but that's changed but that's on a lighter note so again Anshuman <laughs> thanks again uh, so as we discussed, uh, uh, we like to have a format where the guest talks about top five tips in his area of expertise. And I would really request you to talk about the top five learnings from your LinkedIn journey. 
and it would be helpful for the audience uh, and uh, i will also have some kind of a presentation which captures your thoughts for a easy reference uh, over to young shuman sure so ashish this has been the most difficult part because i remember you telling me that you would like five tips and i am hardly the kind of person who has three tips or five tips or top 10 uh, but i appreciate the format because your audience will be able to uh, you know latch on to it or find some value in it so one request straight away is that these tips are my tips you know they they work for me it may not work for everyone in the same order or same priority for some people it may be slightly different so one thing i tell everybody and this is not the tip part but one thing i tell everybody is that find your own journey right so experiment find something you will you will find uh, there are some common areas which i will now share as tips um, so first one which uh, since i speak to a lot of people on also ashish who are um, interested in building their game or growing their game on linkedin and they overthink this a lot you know so first tip is don't overthink there are enough and more people who will read what you will write or share a lot of people think that you know if i write who will read who will think who will you know even like my post and other things there are more than enough people who will read and write uh, read and share your post or like your post so don't worry too much about it don't overthink Uh, this is the number one area where people procrastinate or delay their posting on linkedin and um, this is robbing people of valuable content you especially people who have some experience or knowledge in an area expertise in an area they can write if they want to write right so or don't want to write you know not everybody has to create content on linkedin so if you want to then just start and uh, part of this will be that uh, don't compare somebody's day 100 with your day 1 so this is another mistake people make is that oh but that fellow you know he gets 100 likes every post but there are other people who get 1000 like every post there are other people who get 10000 likes every post but you can't compare when you are starting today right so so tip number 1 uh, this i'll give an example so that it is clear to the audience i post book summaries every monday for over i think one and a half years about 75 weeks now non stop and initially it was 10 likes 20 likes and and so on now 200 to 300 is quite normal uh, for most posts of course some still don't do well which is fine but that's the nature of it i don't keep a tab but for this podcast uh, i actually went back and looked at some some of the numbers so it will take time if you are adding value you will get there don't overthink right thanks thanks anshuan in fact this resonates quite nicely because this has happened to me right because you remember few years back right uh, when your linkedin engagement was really uh, starting to pick up i had reached out and said that uh, to congratulate you on your on your journey yeah. and kind of try to get inspired and you very patiently told the kind of tools and how you go about it but uh, to be honest it again took some 6 months to a year from that conversation to me actually starting this this podcast and uh, and i really couldn't uh, you know uh, agree less with you so uh, you know being consistent is something which once you start then it becomes a second nature and a second habit and you know the classical parkinson's law that work will uh, occupy the given time so if you want to do something you have to do something so that is that is really Uh, something which I uh, no, have have been trying to practice here, so that's that's really great. Uh, what would be your second tip for the audience? Second, I mean, again, this is not in order. Uh, so anybody listening to this now, later, you know, should not think this is the second most important or second in order. These are just five uh, that I have tried to assemble for you, Ashish, and there could be more also. Uh, second area which one must remain interested in is experiment with formats so linkedin today offers you a lot of formats short form long form video audio uh, you can of course do audio live events you can do linkedin live events i do a lot of these uh, you can have polls you can write articles so there is a very wide range of format available and uh, a lot of people make this mistake of sticking to one format 
and which they like now any social media or even if linkedin doesn't want to call itself a social media it is in some ways similar to other social media as well all media when you are in the public is about what people like not what you like i may like short format but if my audience would like long format i should write long format more right so this slightly narcissistic uh, approach towards um, format or preference for certain formats is actually very very against the whole grain of social media or, or whole grain of anything like linkedin so i when i coach people who want to grow their linkedin journey and i do that quite often now so people come to me um yeah, having seen the last 2 3 years growth i do share with them that you don't sit and decide what will work for your audience the audience will decide right? so you experiment you find your niche and you keep playing with that as well so for example i don't do short videos much right but i have experimented quite a bit with 2 minute 3 minute and even 1 minute videos and uh, for a change it look, it works out well i don't i like to write a little long format but every now and then at least once or twice a week i do write a short format post so that is because your audience also want want some variety and b trends and patterns also change so this would be i think the next important uh, area that i would say that experiment with formats you don't decide what your audience will like let the right. audience decide right. especially when you're starting out that that's a, that's a very good point and i think it also uh, related to the fact that you know having started that right you kind of get into a little bit of comfort zone okay. possibly right because you know yeah. you have kind of you have kind of uh, overcome a comfort zone and started something but when you start you kind of get into some comfort and then you feel okay this is the way but that's that's a very relevant point and also uh, let me share with you uh, i have also started experimenting for example now uh, i've kind of for uh, guest on my show who are also authors uh, we have created some kind of a giveaway uh, kind of a thing right so on a monday i kind of post uh, uh, something which is related with the uh, upcoming guest uh, podcast and that kind of has uh, it's kind of attracting many a lot new audience i would say because it's kind of an interesting format so carousels for me was a new format but to your point definitely i could like to look at more formats uh, as well i don't know maybe writing more in terms of blogs or polls short videos but yes that's a very good point of experimenting because unless you experiment you won't know by right, what works you won't know exactly yeah. so what would be your third tip uh, for the audience So third is a slightly more offbeat area, um, and and this is probably more of me, right? So I share a lot of stories from growing up, from my college, from my uh, you know work early working days and more recent working days as well, and try and link to uh, sharing a lesson about life or career or some of these. So, but the essential part of that is uh, some kind of storytelling. So. that piece i believe is extremely important and that has helped me quite a bit in reaching out to more people connecting with them them liking my kind of work and what i'm sharing and so on see eventually why are we here we are here to increase influence and make an impact uh, that's why we are here some will make money through this some may not make money uh, people who have a full time job like me will make zero money because we can't and you know we have to focus on something which is more full time so but we do want to increase our influence and impact and storytelling is a important area so third tip is around storytelling tell stories but tell your own stories right very often what i find is that people tell somebody else's story and in third you know person format so they are basically telling somebody so it becomes more like you saw a movie and then you are sharing some movie story it will never connect right so unless you of course are part of that movie then it's a different thing but um, tell your own stories um, and uh, of course if you are part of that story and you are a character then it is your story as well so tell it from your point of view 
and then share what you can connect this is a and this is not me saying there is a very uh, fantastic book uh, uh, and you did mention that i can share some books as well there is a book called story worthy by matthew dix amazing book on telling stories uh, in all kind of formats uh, matthew dix is has won more grand slam storytelling events than anybody else in the world and uh, he recently then retired from all kinds of stage performance but he is like a grand master of storytelling globally so he has a very you know i would say well written chapter in his book that tell your own stories so i latch on to that uh, and i think that is extremely important because i do read peep stories of from people who uh, which don't connect because they don't connect because it is not their story No, so, so that um, that's the third i would say very important one yeah and how to do this again i can share a little bit here that uh, maintain some kind of a log or a journal that stories from when you were growing up stories from when you were in school college stories from later stories from first job stories from uh, you know later recent jobs and so on and uh, every story has a 5 second moment so look for that what is that key moment in that story if you can't do all this then it is better to stay away from storytelling because it will not connect and people will just see you as a rambling person who is right. not making sense exactly you need to have that aha moment so so one more thing which just with my guess right tangent i've seen that in your post you always have a, a kind of a selfie whenever you talk about your life story right so is that for uh, any specific reason or uh, or it's to make the story more appealing and more personal oh no so that is more recent so i have never earlier put my photographs um, with my posts or stories in general but more recently with the linkedin algorithm itself preferring people uh, preferring photographs or some kind of images i do share maybe once a week or so not always um, you know with our kind of face <laughs> who's who's trying to get likes from our face but um, it uh, with the mobile consumption increasing what happens is that the way linkedin loads on your mobile the pay app that loads on your mobile the image gets uh, seen first so to to kind of operate with that algorithm i do sometimes experiment this is also part of experiment like i spoke earlier this, this is a format uh, it may work for short time who knows maybe linkedin will deprioritize this in future so there will be no need but i am least interested in putting my selfie or photograph but i am trying to experiment because that's how linkedin today works particularly on mobile so to increase outreach i am trying that it's not working <laughs> so um so yeah so but that's a that's a very recent uh, thing but but yes completely different reason <laughs> great great anshuman so what would be your fourth uh, tip for the audience ha ah, so fourth tip is a li- little bit more instructional ashish uh, it is about online writing so a lot of people who write who think they write well and i'm sure they write well in their correspondence and you know office work or could be even authors or aspiring authors they have to understand that that kind of writing does not work on any online platform unless they are writing on medium or other such you know long form formats right linkedin is by design see each post can have about 3000 characters characters includes emojis space full stop everything right so that translates to no more than 450 to 500 words approximately so you have to tell your story in that or your post or your lesson in 500 if you daily write 500 words people are going to get bored so you need some variety also so some day you have to write 100 also right so or 20 also so to have that variety in your writing style to write from 50 words to 100 words to 500 words is important secondly the formatting is extremely important people um, a lot of people i coach Uh, struggle with online writing because they write it like they normally write which is full paragraph you know describe background this, uh, the body the parting line full grammar and everything 
now this does not work on your mobile because uh, you know people have a small screen and they are reading vertically very quickly so you have to get the attention you can't overbold too many things uh, or use emojis all the time so you have to learn the art of what sentence you will separate from the paragraph where will you end the statement what will be your hook line what will be your cta cta is called to action and other things so the improving your online writing is extremely extremely important um, take feedback or i would uh, what i recommend to my people uh, people who come to me for some coaching is that pick people 10 people 10 creators who are similar to you or whom who are your role models or you are aspiring to become like them copy their style not their content copy their style right learn from their style and copy that style but be brief you know be very specific clear so that online writing actually is very different from your regular uh, writing and that is a mistake people make is that they bring the same style to Uh, online writing and then they will write paragraphs oh, and it. then they will come back and say boss uh, i didn't get even two likes or five likes got or it. something got it got so, it yeah i mean that's a very uh, a well thought articulated point so one is of course you need to write grammatically correct with the right tone you know maybe use tools like say hemingway app or grammarly to ensure the basics are right but the the formatting etc is a valid point uh, just on that point right i have seen many times where people try to write the post like some poem or like a haiku right mm. there are short very short uh, lines and there are lots of spaces at some point it, it found to be interesting but at times it seems irritating so is that is that a trend which has gone off or how do you comment on that um, I never like that trend personally Ashish but uh, maybe we have grown up in a time where you know writing properly was the trend <laughs> now that is no longer the trend I am happy to adjust my style I am happy to but I am not so comfortable writing completely half sentences and leaving everything to imagination so but you are right I have seen many of those things and see we have to remember that again i and you may not be the audience for that particular creator so they are writing for their audience and if it is working for their audience it is fine got it uh, so like i said in earlier two points that you know create for your audience and uh, write experiment with formats and so on they might be experimenting with a format and um, and some people actually write pretty good short posts i have a friend um, uh, who is a career coach as well he is brilliant with like 20 30 word post and his word play and how he ends and starts the sentence there are no sentences in his post but fantastic engagement because his audience is you know job seekers in 20 to mid 20s or late 20s that kind of audience and they love his uh, content uh, so it works for him so technically speaking if there are too many spaces linkedin actually deprioritizes it a little bit because it does see that you are uh, you know playing too much around and it might be an automated post or something so my suggestion is that don't leave too many line spaces um, one line space is more than enough um, and uh, because you are making the audience scroll also right particularly on mobile so why are you making them scroll if you are not adding value so so yeah your observation is right but not my style but some people use and maybe it is working for them great great fantastic so uh, the last uh, last tip what could be your last tip for the audience last tip is slightly different from you know creating so the first four were more about what do you do to create and you know put your content or put your thoughts out in the public this is about you know growing your audience and growing your um, tribe so to say so a mistake many creators or many people who are active on linkedin they make is that they post their content and then move on so they don't look at what others are posting they don't look at uh, commenting they don't engage with their own audience so this is an area which is uh, something i and this is free coaching because uh, in my coaching session i will charge for this but <laughs> but i can share on your platform that one of the most uh, i would say useful hacks is that when you post something 
Uh, firstly, remain active on the platform when you are posting. So, 15 minutes prior to that and 15 minutes after that or half an hour after that, remain active. So, that tells LinkedIn that this person is actually active and this is not a bot that is operating. And of course, you, that also allows you the opportunity. If somebody comments in that first half an hour or so, you can actually reply to that comment. So, this is one area. And just to build on that, I always tell everybody that, you know, during the day, spend some time. If people have responded to your post or article in, and particularly put a comment, which is substantial comment. It is not just nice post, thank you. Those things you can ignore. Uh, but other things, if somebody has asked you a question or they have countered your point of view or they have supported your point of view or added to your point of view, please go and write something for them, right? So that will actually improve engagement. People will feel more connected with you. Your audience will feel that, hey, this guy is real. You know, if I'm posting, I'm posted a reply. He or she is coming back and replying to me. And that you may not realize, but you may make somebody's day. I get a lot of uh, quote unquote fan mail and stuff where people say that, you know, I'm glad that you replied. So, and I don't find any I mean, I, it's not normal for me, but I find that it's not normal for many other people. So this is something I teach everybody or try and teach. Uh, teach post that, you know, please go on your own post and engage. And if possible, go on other people's posts and support and increase. That improves your own authenticity or, right. or whatever you are trying to share. Right. No, in fact, it happened with me today. Was, uh, on mm. Twitter, I was followed by a very well-respected global uh, tech uh, commentator and mm. like a fat boy I took that screenshot and uh, put it back on Twitter saying that wow this is a super start to the day I'm really happy uh, and tagged him of course and to, to his credit right I mean he has got like uh, millions of followers so he liked that liked my tweet of mine so as, as a follower of him it, it really added value so that, that's great that's, that's the way the world works right so exactly. why are we uh, you know, exactly. best way is to do what the world does and, you know, and manage yeah. it that way. True, true, true. Excellent, excellent. Uh, thanks, Anshuman. That uh, really gives a great perspective. And uh, thank you, dear listeners, for tuning in. The presentation in the show called Notes will have uh, various bonus content and Anshuman's social media links as well that you should definitely check. And do share, subscribe, share, and like this podcast available on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and other channels. Bye for now. Talk to you soon.